जय श्री मन्नारायण जय श्री मन्नारायण जय श्री मन्नारायण I pay my obeisances to my spiritual master, Sri Madhavid Guru Sudarsha Nacharji Maharaj. I pay my obeisances to Lord Sri Ramanuj. I pay my obeisances to the Purva Acharyas. I pay my obeisances to the twelve Alvas. I pay my obeisances to Mother Lakshmi, and I pay my obeisances to Lord Sri Manana. I welcome all of you present here at the Sri Narayan Dham in Durban. South Africa I welcome those who are watching this discourse locally nationally and internationally and I welcome in advance those who are going to be watching this discourse when it is posted in the various groups from around the world we continue on our topic creation and the reason the supreme lord has inserted the subject of creation in our scriptures which is called the vedas is that man through understanding creation can understand himself through understanding creation man can learn to live with himself and man around him with himself and nature around him with himself and all living entities around him compatibly and when man becomes compatible in his own nature then man becomes successful but to attain that compatibility man need to understand his own nature together within the nature in which he is created in so man need to know himself man need to know his environment and man need to know his reason for being placed in this particular environment and man need to know how to come out of this environment and the coming out of this environment man is blessed through the grace of god with millions of spiritual masters that take their birth timelessly to direct man out of this environment these spiritual masters teach you to know god and to accept god knowing god and accepting god is called knowledge these spiritual masters ask you to reject those that believe this material world is the all in all and the scientists that make you believe this material world is the all in all and this is called ignorance so spiritual masters have been trained through thousands of lifetimes to appear on this earth and disengage your mind from believing that this material universe is the all in all your material body is the all in all you 
are this material body. Spiritual masters teach you that this material universe is temporary. All the scientific advancement in this material universe is temporary. Your body and all the materials composed that make up your body is temporary. Residing within your body is an entity that is your real self. And that entity is the only entity that is permanent. And the creator of this universe is also permanent. Then you have to do a, logic, a logical calculation within yourself. A logical calculation within your own mind. And today, in the year 2020, everyone knows what an equation is. Everyone knows what an equation is. So temporary plus temporary will give you who said permanent? Who said permanent? Okay. Temporary plus temporary will give you temporary. Permanent plus permanent will give you permanent. So if you place your bets and your entire life on the temporary, what would you attain? Temporary. And if you place your life on the permanent, what you, will you attain? Permanent. What is contained in the temporary? What is the constitution of this universe? Material, and what are the effects? What are the effects? Take today, for example, everyone is warmly dressed. Why? Why? It's cold. And then three months or two months later, the fans will be on. Why? There's a change from hot to cold or cold to hot. This is the oscillating nature of the effects of material nature. Yesterday you were very sad, some of you. Today you are happy. Yesterday some of you were very happy. Today you are sad. What is this? It is the constitutional effects of this material nature. It means that any dimension your mind settles in, Whatever feelings or emotions are produced, the effects are temporary. The effects are temporary because this coldness that you're feeling is temporary and later you will feel hot. That will also be temporary. Some people are happy temporarily and some people are sad, tempo ready. It means that there is a flux. There is a continuous flux and everything is kaleidoscopic. It keeps changing. So 
if you bank on material science and the material universe, what will the result of your interest in that banking be? Temporary happiness, temporary pain. Everything will be in a flux. Everything will be in a flux. But if you bank in the permanent, eternal bank, which is the Supreme Lord, then the interest derived from that will be permanent bliss, permanent happiness. And the training for this bliss and happiness starts at a sat -sang. The training for this permanent happiness and permanent bliss starts at a sat -sang. What is the definition of sat -sang? A group of pious people listening to the Absolute truth. A group of pious people listening to the absolute truth. This material universe is created from ignorance. This material universe is created from the ingredients of ignorance. If something is created out of a particular element, then what would be the constituents of all the element of all that is within this element? If you bake a bread from flour and slice the bread up, what would each slice comprise of? Flour. So if the substratum of this material universe is based on ignorance, then what would the effects of every entity within this uni universe be ignorance. ignorance and it is for this purpose that the Lord in his mercy incarnates variously timelessly he comes down from his position as Lord Sriman Narayan he lowers himself to a second position as incarnation so that he can retrieve man back to sanity of knowledge. Is there any incarnation of God that did not give you knowledge so that you could be retrieved and placed on his lap again? Every incarnation of the Lord is for the purpose of retrieving the fallen souls who are swimming in a mire of ignorance, believing the ignorance to be the truth and the truth to be ignorance. And this is the game of material life. This is the game of material life. To overcome the game of material life and to get back to your constitutional position. What is your constitutional position?
What does constitutional position mean, Jaybai? That position which you was constituted to be established in. And what is your constitutional position that you should be established in? Knowledge and bliss. Knowledge and bliss. That is the component of each living entity. Knowledge and bliss. And knowledge and bliss is one of the millions of attributes of the Supreme Law. And if knowledge and bliss is an attribute of the Supreme Law, then equating that every living entity is an attribute of the Supreme Law. It goes without saying. This is science. This is absolute science. This is the science of the Creator. And this science is sourced from the Creator Himself. So just within this framework of my discourse, Logic will make you understand that everyone seated here has a current status in their life. And that current status is there because of ignorance. That current status that you are in life is that you are imprisoned and shackled to your current status because of ignorance and to unshackle yourself your constitutional position is knowledge and bliss you have been covered by ignorance to remove this ignorance you need knowledge and once you attain knowledge then you will unshackle yourself from the misery and duality of this material universe. This material universe is based on a duality, hot and cold, hot and cold, good and bad, high and low, everything opposite creates a flux, North Pole and South Pole creates a flux and within this flux, this set of living entities are vibrating. If a child has a toothache, a, a two-year-old child that has teeth, has a toothache, that child is ignorant that there is a remedy for that toothache. And if no one attends to that child, then that child will be in pain until the toothache recedes. That child will be in pain because that child does not know that there is a remedy. Extract the tooth, the pain is gone. Extract your ignorance, what will happen? Knowledge will dawn, and with knowledge, you will be pervaded with absolute bliss. Absolute bliss. This is your constitutional position. This is who you are. You are full of knowledge and full of bliss. You've been covered with ignorance. And what is the first point of ignorance that you are covered in? I am this body. Your first 
point of ignorance that you are covered in is that I am this body. That ignorance impels you to attach yourself to the five senses which are an apparatus of this body. And then you want to gratify your desires of the five senses which are the apparatus of this body. And in order to gratify the senses of this body and to fulfill your desires, you steamroll into the world. You steamroll into the world and sometimes you steamroll others to fulfill your desire. Because your desire is self-based. Your desire is self-based. So the Guru's job is to tell you very simply that you are not this body. You are not this body. This body has been awarded to you through the grace of the Supreme Lord. This human body is not from your karma. This human body is from the grace of God. This human body is from the grace of God. All these other bodies, look around, is from karma. This body was your first body and this body can be your last body. Because when you first entered karma, when you first entered the material universe, you were given a human body. Through that human body, you created myriads of karma. Through the creation of myriads of karma, you evolved or devolved into 8.4 million species or 8.3999 million species. Now you are given an opportunity again through the grace of God. Don't take this human body for granted. Don't take this human body for granted because you would not know what your next body is. Reincarnation does not mean that my next body will be human. In the Bhagavad Gita, which is absolute science, states that your last thought at the point of death and your accumulated karma, both good and bad, determines your next body. How many of you had the opportunity of seeing a dead body, the face of a dead body? Very less. You're, the rest of you all have not been to funerals? Okay. So sometimes when you go to the funerals, you hear families saying lovingly, Acharya ji died with a smile on his face. Have you all heard that? 
Acharya ji died with a smile on his face. Why did Acharya ji die with a smile on his face? Because he saw his next body. Because he saw his next body. Because your last thought plus your sum total of your karma will determine your next body. This is absolute science. This is absolute science. And then you also get people that died and when you go and look at their face, you can't make the face out. You see the face is contorted. Have you noticed that at funerals? It's because that face is not happy in the body that it is going into. Logic? Common sense? Otherwise all, body, all facial expression supposed to be the same at death. If facial expressions are differing then this science of the Bhagavad Gita is being corroborated. So not everyone gets an opportunity, not every soul gets an opportunity to have a human body. If God graced you with a human body, and in most of the religious system, it is stated that God made you in his own image. So the human image closely resembles the image of God. He made you in his own image after giving you 8.3999 different images so that you can get close to him. Don't you think it's logic and common sense? Don't you also think it is absolute science? That for you and God to interface, then you should resemble him and you should have imbibed within you the same qualities that are within him so that you can interface. Is it logic? Is it common sense? Is it absolute science? Because if God has to liberate a dog, how different is the language and the resemblance between the dog and God? How different are the qualities of a dog and God? Do you understand? So he will bring you in order to interface in almost an identical version of him. So, and this is why you've been given this human body. Not to build bridges, not to fly aeroplanes. Primarily you've been given this human body to attain God. In order to sustain yourself in a secondary version, you have various occupations. Your primary reason for this human body is to use it as a vessel to reach the Supreme Lord. The secondary, the Secondary reason for this human body is to sustain and maintain yourself, to sustain and maintain those around you, to sustain and maintain the community around you, so that all can one day reach God and interface with God. Do you understand? All of you understand. So forget the miseries you are in. Those miseries are temporary. Those miseries are temporary. Like the child 
who had a toothache. The child never knew at that point in time when the child was in excruciating pain that that pain can be stopped. All the child knew is that I am in pain. And when somebody guided the child and took the child to a dentist, then that rotten tooth was removed. There was slight pain. There was slight pain in the removal of the tooth. Then there was absolutely no pain. And the child was in absolute bliss. Similarly, when you come to a sat son, when that ignorance is extracted, there will be a disarray in your life. There will be a disarray in your life. It is natural like the tooth. And after that disarray, everything will settle. And it will settle for the... It will settle for the... Betterment of each in the ritual. And if the Guru is telling you that he is training you, he is training you with bliss and knowledge in the material universe so that it can be used when you are liberated then there can be no suffering. Because if you are suffering, then what signal is it giving you? Still You're still ignorant. So if you're suffering, then that means a part of the tooth has been left behind. You must go back to the dentist and carry on extracting all the bits and pieces, all the bits and pieces until there is absolutely no rotten tooth in the gum of the mouth of the child. You understand? Does it make sense? Is it perfect lo logic? But if the child, when you take the child to the dentist, and if the child knows more or expresses itself to know more than the dentist, then will you think the dentist will, be, will have capacity to do a good job on the child? You have, the child have to submit. When the dentist say, baby, open your mouth wide. I'm going to give you a small injection, it's going to pain and slowly I'm going to pull your tooth out and I have three beautiful sweets for you. When I take the tooth out, you can go home and eat this sweet. If the child tells the dentist, no, don't give me injection or don't use this injection, then the child is interfering with the process. The child is interfering with the process. Sometimes this process can have a negative impact on you because you, the child, interfered. Similarly, when you come here, when we extracting your ignorance, we give you a few sweets. Whilst extracting your ignorance, we give you sweets. You get promoted. You get married. You have children. And your life becomes happy. These are the sweets we gave you. This is not the bliss we're giving you. These are the sweets we're giving you, training you for the bliss.
but very few children would extract a tooth or take an injection without lying to them about the about giving them sweets and that's how the human mentality is if I put an advert on all the social media, on billboards, on the freeways, all over. Join the Acharya Sham Ramanut Foundation for knowledge and bliss. I'll be sitting alone here with Mataji and my Gomatas. Isn't? But now we say, come for sweets. Come for Sweets, and with the sweets we're giving you knowledge and bliss. There have to come a point in time where you have to totally ignore the sweets. Where you have to totally now ignore the sweets and concentrate on the knowledge and bliss. And that transition period, you must not know more than the Guru. Because the day you know more than a guru is the day you don't need the guru anymore. And it is only the guru that can remove your ignorance. You can't go to a mechanic and ask the mechanic to remove the baby's tooth to these pliers. Isn't? But a similar plier the mechanisms, almost the same, will extract the tooth used by a dentist. So if you go and try and supersede the knowledge of a guru, never ever, no matter how great your temptation is, think in any aspect, that the Guru could have mistaken. That the Guru could have mistaken or that a certain amount of knowledge that you have is superior to the Gurus. Never, ever, if the knowledge of the Guru is contradicting with your knowledge, then tell yourself, I have not reached a stage to understand the knowledge of the Guru. And one day, through the Guru's grace, I will reach the stage to understand the knowledge of the Guru. All of you understand? You can't go to a law school and ever think you know more than the rest. When I, was a, uh, when I was in university, yeah, up the road, Durban, Westville, there was a cafe there. It was called a cafeteria. Cafe. I don't know. Anyone has been to Westville University? Been there, Jay? No. You remember the cafe? All those people who sat in the cafe thought they knew more than they thought they knew more than the lecturers. I think some of them are still sitting and seated there, Jay, if you go there. Alright? Because when it came for the results, and you remember, we would learn that some people are sitting there for 10 years, 12 years, but first year students. Right? They just wasted their parents' money because the parents said you must go to university. So they went into the physical university and sat at the cafe. So try and arrest your mind. 
try and arrest your mind. When you join a guru, arrest your mind and release your intellect. You are born with the arrested intellect and that is why we are ignorant and an active mind. The mind is in flux. The mind is in flux. The mind is perpetually saying yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Saturday it will tell you go to satsang. Sunday it will tell you no, you're tired, have a rest. What satsang can do for you? Then Monday it will tell you L. If I only went to satsang, I would have been refreshed for the whole week. Then it will tell you, go to Thursday satsang. Then Wednesday night, Thursday during the day, you are happy to come to Thursday's satsang. Then you saw a nice piece of chicken and you said chicken satsang. <laughs> Chicken satsang. And who won? Chicken. Then you'll enjoy the chicken, but when you're sleeping, the mind is telling you you shouldn't have had the chicken. Satsang was more important. Look at Lizwe. Lizwe, the chicken story affect you? <laughs> and now Lizwe is sleeping next to one chicken, one hen with ten eggs and he's wondering, you know, <laughs> breakfast here or breakfast on top? Breakfast down or breakfast on top? And he got three turkeys and he's thinking, what will I do in December? <laughs> you understand? So this is a mind. The mind is always in a flux. Don't trust your mind. Because your mind has put you in the bush a million times. Arrest the mind. Put handcuffs on the mind. Then take the keys and release the intellect. What will the intellect do? What will the intellect do? Hmm? Yeah, the intellect will tell you the more satsang you do, the more beneficial it is for you. Intellect will tell you be loyal, be truthful, and have gratitude. What intellect will tell you? Be loyal, be truthful, have gratitude. Intellect will tell you this human body was created primarily to attend satsang, and everything else is by the way. Intellect will tell you this. The mind will tell you, no, everything else comes first, satsang is by the way. But the intellect will tell you the opposite. Satsang is first and everything else is by the way. Now let's apply logic to the mind and logic to the intellect. So we've come to a certain point in our life where we know that there is a power higher than us that graces us. Have we come to the point? All of us have come to the point that there is a power higher than us that graces us. Right? 
then logic will tell you that if you befriend this power, if you befriend this power, all right, like in South Africa, our previous state president, our previous state president, he was the power of the country. Then we had the Kupta brothers. They befriended this power. You heard of the Guptas? What they did? When they befriended this power, was it beneficial to them? They thought they were in absolute bliss because they befriended this power. So similarly, the Guru teaches you to befriend this power that is higher than us, that graces us. So if the Guptas befriended one of the counselors, what would have been the quantum of benefit? Jai almost minuscule. But the Guptas befriended the highest power in the country. I want you to use your logic. If you befriend the highest power in this universe, what will be your benefits? Logic. Use logic, all right, and common sense. I don't want to use you to use your intelligence. Remember, there's a difference between intelligence and intellect. Difference between intelligence and intellect, and I explained to someone the other day that even an ant has intelligence. If you place a grain of salt and a grain of sugar, and you place the ant near it, where you think the ant will go? Sugar, because it has intelligence which it uses to go to the sugar. All right? If you take a piece of structure and put it above a growing plant, what will the plant do? It will use its intelligence and grow away from that structure. So plants got intelligence, an ant got intelligence, and material scientists got intelligence. All these intelligence is equal the same. Isn't? Now I'm saying use common sense. What is common sense? Common sense is deductions by the intellect. Is deductions by the intellect. What is common sense telling you? If I have a relationship with the highest order in the universe, Should I ever encounter a problem? That entity which is the highest order in the universe will not be absolute if you have absolutely given yourself to him if you encounter a problem. Because absolute is equal to absolute. Absolute is equal to absolute. Do you understand? You can, in this satsang, I'm not discussing your educated status, your financial status, or any other material designations that you have. 
I'm not interested in your statuses, neither am I interested in which religion you belong to. Because in a mosque, you'll breathe oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. In the church, you'll breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. And yeah, you are breathing in oxygen, breathing out carbon dioxide. I'm teaching you what you're breathing. I'm teaching you the essence. All right? Narayan might sound like a Charo's name. Krishna might sound like a Charo's name. Ram might sound like a Charo's name because we associate these names with Indians. But it has nothing to do with India. Narayan means the source and goal of all living entities. It got absolutely nothing to do with an Indian or with a Charo. It is absolute science. Don't you think that the supreme creator of all should be the source and goal of all living entities? Don't you think? Is it an appropriate name? Allah means the same. And God in English means the same. I'm just using another language. Narayan. Instead of saying J. Sriman, God, or J. Sriman, Allah, I'm saying J. Sriman, Narayan. All of you understand? Every one of you understand? So this science, this is science that I'm teaching you, can be taught in the mosque, can be taught in the church, can be taught in the synagogue can be taught anywhere. Whether you believe in the science or not does not matter because this absolute science is not dependent on your belief. It exists on its own. You have to attach yourself to this science, this absolute science. This science do not gain its recognition by attaching itself to you. This science does not gain its recognition by attaching itself to you. Do you understand? This science is self-sustained and it will continue to be self-sustained. So I'm just going to come back for the reason that most of you are here in satsang today is remember the Guptas. Remember the Guptas. They continued befriending the president. When they got their first allotment, did they stop? Did they stop? It was a continuous relationship. If you want to be a beneficiary of this satsang, then you can't get what you want and go back to where you was and believe that your status quo will be retained from what you got here. Because my, my primary reason for having this satsang is to take your hand and place it in God's hand so that you never leave the hand of God. That's my primary reason. But along the way, I'm giving you lollipops. How long does the lollipop last? Sit up. All right. So don't get fooled by the lollipops. Think like the Guptas. Become opportunistic. Don't be material opportunist. If you want to be an opportunist, be a spiritual opportunist. If you're a spiritual opportunist, you are pure. You are pure. 
There will come time where I'm going to break you up into groups to maintain this ashram. You see, almost single-handedly, single I brought this dilapidated building and a forest, and I turned it into what you see today, almost single-handedly. But now it needs to be maintained. So some of you will come here on Saturdays, like yesterday I took the rake, I raked the entire yard, I cut all the lawn, I took the scrubbing brush and the broom and I hosed the front and the kitchen uh, courtyard. I watered the driveway so when you come and park your vehicle there's not too much dust, okay? It's because I cannot live. I cannot sustain myself if I don't do seva. Because one of the conditions, and this is in all the religions, all religions prescribe to this, when your hand and God's hand is linked, <coughs> then you must also do seva. All right? And I've also explained to somebody that Islam is practicing karma yoga to its fullest. Karma yoga is seva. They do it and they are prosperous. And the reason they prosperous is because they don't let the right hand know what the left hand did. But those of us that profess to be Hindus, They'll donate one brick to the ashram and they'll say they built the entire ashram. You understand? So, already there is a religious system that's showing you that you can be prosperous by doing karma, <coughs> yoga, which is doing action without talking about. All right. And I am involved with both pastors and Molanas. I grew up with them. I spent thousands and thousands of hours debating. I know over 20 top Molanas in Durban, and I know over 20 top pastors in Durban itself. Okay? And I am going to start my interaction with them soon. Okay? Because this is not a religious program, this is a scientific program. And everyone must feel comfortable within this program. And we had a donation done by a Molana for the angels. I'm saying it, they didn't say it, you understand? So similarly, I had some material for the gate that I bought from a Muslim businessman. And he came down here, he was very impressed with the tranquility of this place. We also had the alarm system done by a Christian businessman. And he also came down here and he also spoke about the tranquility of this, this place. You understand? And in conversation with that bhai that sorted the gate out, he said that there is a hotel in Overport that was sold, Jay Bhai. You remember the hotel, Admiral? I'm just saying this again. I want to say this again so that it fits in with my discussion. Admiral Hotel went on sale and it was seen in the newspapers by a group of Muslims that went for namaz, the nine o'clock or the last namaz. And they sat and one of the brothers stated that it would be so nice to buy this hotel and change it into a mosque with all various facilities. And they had the namaz for about 
10 or 15 minutes, whatever the duration. And this building was, I think, going for 20 million rand. When they came out, there was a huge argument and co contestation amongst the brothers. Because already three people fulfilled the 20 million. So they were upset that they couldn't have an opportunity to put their monies in. And what happened in Hinduism? You see a temple, one wall going up for 20 years, another wall going up for 20 years, one door frame going up for 20 years. Why? Because I, in Hinduism, I must come first. Right? In karma yoga, they, you must kill the I and do as a community. So we are learning our own teachings. We are learning our own teachings. Please remember, in as much as you are here, we are here to, the word impossible will, does not exist in this satsang. There's my Guruji, I'm his disciple, I'm giving you what he has given me to distribute to the world. And that is religious principles, economic development, fulfillment of desires, and salvation. <coughs> Guruji met Lord Sriman Narayan personally whilst he was in the forest, doing his austerities and penances for 12 years. And when Lord Sriman asked Guruji what you want, he said, I only want to relieve the suffering of humans on this earth. So, religious principles are there. What are religious principles? Righteous living. Righteous living Economic development, fulfillment of desires, and salvation. This is my Guruji's special. Special, it's in his box. It's not all over the shop. It's what Guruji personally sacrificed his life for. But I am not distributing willy-nilly from each of the boxes. Alright, if you go to Faridabad, it will be different. Yeah, it will be different. Yeah, I want to do it in a coordinated way. I want you to come to Satsang. I want you to learn who you are. I want to, you to learn who God is. I want you to learn why you are in this mess. And I want to show you how I take you out of this mess. All of you understand? You think it's the right way to do it? Because if you know why you're suffering, half my work is done. Daddy, you agree with me? If you don't know why you're suffering, then I have to sit hours and hours with you in my kuti. And I don't have the time. Okay? So, are there any questions? Any questions? Rishis? You know how the system works? If you don't come for a long time to the garage and the needle kept telling you it's full, that means the, the needle in your fuel tank is faulty, you need to repair it. And as soon as you repair it, it will go below the red. And when it goes below the red, what you need to do? Yeah, so sometimes you think the car is running, but you're driving with your mouth, you know. Changing gears whilst the car is in the same place. This satsang particularly, you have to refuel. So the Guru gives specific people specific time frames to refuel. Okay? So some people's fuel will last for a month, 
Some people three weeks, some people two weeks, some people weekly. Which category you think you fall into? Daily. Daily. <laughs> okay. Are there any questions? So I want to bless all of you. I want Lord Narayan to grace each one of you. I want that heaviness on your shoulder to leave you when you leave this satsang. I want your children to be happy. I want your business partners to be happy. I want your employers to be happy. And I want you all to sustain yourself until you come to this satsang again. Because this is God. This is what God gives you. And this is only a particle. It is only a particle of what God can do for you. Right? What are the three things you have to remember? Loyalty, truthfulness, and gratitude. Now is the fourth thing. I'm teaching us. Regular satsang topping up. What's the fourth thing? Regular satsang topping up. Okay? Regular satsang topping up. Rishi, I'm speaking to your entire family when I speak to you. Alright? I'm using protocol. You're the head of the family. Alright? Like the Guptas, they use protocol. They went straight to the president. I'm going to Rishi's family. And Rishi is the president of his family. And those of you that are many in the family, if all can't come, does not matter. But somebody must represent from the house. At a particular satsang. Do you understand? The reason I blessed you as I did is because of the COVID. 19 regulations where you cannot come and take personal blessings from the RC. So I blessed you before the RC. It's exactly the same. It's exactly the same. All right? Only person happy with my blessings is Sita. Sita is ecstatic. Okay? If there's anybody that needs to see me, don't worry how many times you see me. Don't worry how many times you come and see me in my kutu. This is why I am here. This is why I am here. You know, some motor vehicles have a lot of faults, so the mechanic can't fix all the faults one time. So we change one part here, come and see me, we'll change the next part, come and see me, we'll change the next part, okay? So those of you that want to come through, you tell Dana and you come and see me, it's important that you came so far that you come and see me and we can assist you in navigating you until your next stop up, all right? When you come and see me, then I give you a top up plan. A top up plan. Now. Okay, just just before we start RC, uh, what's the date today? 14th. Next week will be 21st. Following week will be 28th. And the following week will be 5th. In exactly Three weeks time on this day we'll be having Guru Purnima. We all know what's Guru Purnima. It is on this one day, this one day that you grace the Guru and you bless the Guru. All right. So after Satsang. Whilst you are having your refreshment, form yourself a small committee. 
this function won't be held from the ashram, it will be held from you. The Guru can't cut his own birthday cake and bake the cake himself. Now, do you understand? So right from the deco, Rita is there? Rita, from the deco, from everything, from everything relating to that function, you will formulate yourself into a committee, Venita, and let Guru Purnama happen on that Saturday. I won't raid the yard. Sunday, sorry. I'm saying Saturday, Sita. I won't be doing anything. So a group of you will come here on Saturday. Make sure everything is right for Sunday. Guru likes to eat julienne, prawn, pani. All right? And if there's anyone that's bringing dhoti for the Guru, please bring white only. White only. All right? Jai Shri